Hey everyone, it's Miss M. Today we're going to be talking about quartiles and interquartile range. So I'm going to go through the guided notes with you, so make sure you either printed out this paper or you just copy it down on another sheet. There are three quartiles which split the data into four equal groups. So we could see here one, two, three quartiles, the first, the second, the third quartile, and it splits the data into four equal groups, one, two, three, four, which means each group is 25%. Also here we can see Q2 is the median of the data, which means it's the middle number. So let's take a look at how this data is split up right now. 25% of the data is blank Q1. So if we look at Q1, 25% of the data is over here. So 25% is less than Q1. And 75% goes this way. So 75% of the data is greater than Q1. Now let's look at Q2. 50% of the data is less than Q2. Also, 50% of the data is greater than Q2. And Q3, or the third quartile, 75% of the data here is less than Q3, and also 25% of the data is greater than Q3. Okay. So now that we took a look at how the data is split up using our quartiles, let's uh, go through the steps to find quartiles. So if we're given a bunch of data, the first thing we want to do is to arrange the data from least to greatest. Then we're going to find the median, which is our Q2. So that's the middle number. If you have two middle numbers, you have to find the average of the two numbers. So you add those two numbers together and then divide by two. Once uh, you have the median, that splits your data into two groups, an upper half and a lower half. You're going to find the median of the upper half, that'll be Q3, and then you find the median of the lower half, that'll be Q1. And then you want to find the interquartile range. The interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Let's actually do an example together. So you're going to find the quartiles, the interquartile range, and then you have to interpret the interquartile range. Interpret means write a sentence for this data. So this data shows body weights and pounds recorded at a health screening of a group of people. So first thing we have to do is order from least to greatest. So while I'm ordering from least to greatest, you should do the same. I suggest as you use your numbers, cross them off. So you don't use them again. Hopefully I have enough room for this. There's kind of a lot of numbers here, um, but we'll make it work. So keep doing this along with me. Oh, well, there's 125, knew there was one, 126. It's easiest if you can draw it out in one straight line, but unfortunately I have limited room here. So I'll just make a second row. I'm going to squish in these last three numbers. All right, looks like I got them all. Hopefully you did as well. So I'm going to change the color to cross them off just to make it easier. So step one, order from least to greatest. Step two, find the median. So the median is the middle number. So cross off one from the front, cross up one from the back, and keep doing that until you get to the middle. Okay, so right now we have two middle numbers. We have 126 and 128. So we have to find the average of the two. So you're going to add them and then divide by two. 
So 126 plus 138 is 264 divided by 2 is 132. So we're looking for Q1, Q2, Q3. So the median, remember, is Q2. So 132 is Q2. I'm going to change color again so I don't get confused. And now this is where your data gets split in half. So since we have two numbers, you're going to split the data and one of the middle numbers goes to the upper half, one goes to the lower half. If you only had one middle number, you would put the line right through that middle number and that would not be included in your upper or lower half. So now let's, I'm gonna do Q1 first, it doesn't really matter, but let's find the median of Q1 or the lower half. Okay, and here is my middle number. So Q1 is 117. And then I have to find the median of the upper half. So again, same thing. Continue to cross off until you get a middle number. And here we have 153. So Q3 is 153. So we found the quartiles. Now we need to find the interquartile range. To find the interquartile range, remember we are going to do oops, Q3 minus Q1. So that's 153 minus um, 117. And you get 36. So the interquartile range is 36. Okay, check that off. And then we need to interpret the data. So if I go back to that chart we saw where all of the, um, where the three quartiles split the data into four equal parts, this would be 117, this would be Q2, I'm not gonna write in there, and Q3 would be right here because these are the numbers we're looking at, the interquartile range. So I can say here, maybe it'd be easier if I type it out, hopefully we can make the font smaller so I can fit it, okay. So in interquartile range, we're subtracting, so that's difference. So the difference in the middle 50%, middle 50%, because in between Q1 and Q3, this is 50% here, 25 and 25, of the data is no more than 36, okay? What this means is no matter what numbers I pick in between, Q1 and Q3, all of these numbers in here, from one circle to the next circle, no matter what numbers I pick and subtract them, I'm not going to get a difference of more than 36. That's the biggest difference I'm going to have. Okay, so now you are ready to try some examples on your own.